Hello, today I want to show you some interesting images from various ruins found in the region of Ethis. Although the ruins are not really famous, they have some interesting features like um, underground chambers made of uh, big megalithic blocks. Quality of the stonework that doesn't really match the quality that could be achieved with simple manual tools and a stone quarry on the side that uh, opens more questions rather than giving answers. The official name of this group of ruins would be the Belevi Mausoleum. Probably this megalith was built with the use of the same technique as the megaliths of Peru, for example, because we see the same protrusions on the stone blocks, like those seen in Peru and other parts of the world. And that's not the only parallel, we also have polygonal stonework, and as usual, huge size stone blocks fitting perfectly with each other with no visible gaps or mortar in between the stones. Also, that same technique that we see in Peru, in Cambodia, in Egypt and other places, as if first they placed the stones and after that they cut them. If they were following the logic of stone masonry that we use nowadays, then this corner of the room would be uh, the, co the stone would end at the corner, that would be much easier to make, but it doesn't, it's uh, of somewhat unnecessarily, at least for our logic, complicated shape, but apparently they had a different style of work that we don't even understand, maybe this was easier for them. The size of the stones used on the outside of the structure is definitely big, but not really giant. But as one starts descending in the underground parts, then one realizes, oh, this is huge. Especially the stones that were used in the ceiling of the underground chambers are particularly large. The metal clamps that are found on this type of megaliths all over the world are present here as well. So how exactly was all this built? At places it uh, really looks like uh, manual work, for example here or here. But yet at other spots where the earthquake have shifted away those stones that fit perfectly with each other, the work looks like kind of uh, done with a machine, with some sort of advanced tool. According to the Russian research group of LAI, which examined the site, and uh, most of the images in this uh, video are from them, by the way, but they think that there is a lot of machine, high-tech machine work done on the site. Like, for example, do you see those fine 
lines they go on both sides of this edge and at the same time pay attention at the size at the scale of everything it's just a couple of centimeters or some of the details are even the size of uh, millimeters and for what just one of the numerous blocks on the outer casing of the alleged Muslim. It would be kind of uh, strange and necessarily uh, troublesome to go into such uh, minor details when you build something of the size of a building. We don't do this even nowadays when we supposedly have tools which would uh, produce such a result much much faster. So were thousands of uh, primitive chaps playing around for years with small files to uh, make all these details? And that's uh, only about the borders. What about the ornaments? It's not impossible to make this type of ornaments with uh, manual tools only, but then why would you spend years after that polishing them? Like as if you're making a jewelry, not a building. Look at the tiny, minute, sharp edge. One would need to set the micro mode on one's camera to even take photos of it. But then what about making it and then making hundreds of them and then thousands of them? Even if we assume that it was just people's hobby to make such uh, miniature things and borders that one would need uh, later on a magnifying glass to see. And um, at the same time they didn't pay attention to other things like, for example, the neighborhood... Uh, tribes ravaging their homes <clears throat> or um, the crops that uh, would uh, be feeding them later on maybe would need watering or some sort of um, field work <clears throat> apparently they were not interested in that things they were um, more into borders but this doesn't explain one other thing how come all these decorative elements are done with digital precision? Like, for example, this border is uh, 20 meters long and it's absolutely perfect. Yes, it is possible to polish it. After all, it could be marble, so it's um, uh, polishable with a harder stone. But how do you make it perfect? When you do a purely manual work, at places it will be not, not so well measured. Like this is also a beautiful tribal art, but this is manually done. It's rough, it's shaggy. Well, the expedition team found it somewhat suspicious that all these uh, artistic elements are exactly of the same size which is not typical, if at all possible, for manual chisel work. Appears to be cutting marks, some sort of uh, tool marks are also found here and there on the site. So there is a stone quarry right there on site. At first sight it gives an overall impression that this is some sort of a primitive quarry. But when you start looking at it you realize well actually this couldn't have been a chisel work for the simple reason that this uh, channels, these cuttings are too small to insert your hand and wave a hammer around. The marks on the side of the quarry also are not particularly like that of a chisel, but uh, as if the stone was uh, melted little by little and then removed somehow. 
Chisels don't leave marks that stretch on for a couple of meters. Well, the conclusion of the Russian group is that uh, they have been using some sort of technique that is uh, far away from our current understanding. So who built all these ruins? They appear to be in what we would call antique style and yet, how were the people of the antiquity connected, for example, with uh, the builders who were using the same style in Peru or in Egypt? They must have had really close connections because so many elements repeat each other all over the globe. In the cool of the evening, they used to gather Need the stars in the middle, circle near an old oak tree At the times appointed by the seasons of the earth And the phases of the moon In the center stood a woman Equal with the others and respected for her worth and as far as the worldwide civilization which was uh, building in this style, it was defeated. And those who defeated them persistently slaughtered everybody who had bits of the old knowledge. That's why we see such architectural elements even in cultures that existed a few hundred years ago and yet there is never any trace how did they do it exactly and how were they connected. Um, to the other cultures, often across oceans, which also used the same techniques. Those who defeated them not only successfully erased a lot of their culture, but they also erased the memory of them. We don't even have an official name in the known history for them. In my documentaries I call them the survivors, but in this song they have even a better name, the nature people. In this holocaust against the nature people Nine million European women died And a new fraudulent history was conjured by those who were victorious so that the children from early childhood are fed up with lies in school and when they grow up, they don't inquire into the real history. Let's see what they're telling us about this site officially. So from this fable here, you can find out all the names of the chaps as if somebody knows anything about them and even the details like his body was guarded by a faithful dog and was found a few days later and sent to his son Alexander etc and then they are telling us uh, fables about his grandmother a Persian princess married a distinguished general etc and all this, of course, is made out of thin air. There is no proof, no historic evidence behind it. But it's very skillfully made and it creates the impression. You see, they know such a small details, even how many days the faithful dog was uh, guarding it. So how is it possible if they know the details that the... Uh, my major things are even wrong. That That's impossible, right? The so-called Belevi Muslim, about which we actually know absolutely nothing, is not the only ruin in the region of its type. 
For example, this is in the nearby Athens. The lower layers of the construction are actually identical to that of the Belevi Muslim. This is an excellent photograph from Athens. Just see the quality of the older work and compare it to the more recent stuff. The achievement of the advanced monkeys. And this type of buildings, although they are not as impressive in terms of the size of the building blocks as the Belevi Muslim, they clearly belong to the same culture. And they are found in hundreds and thousands, not only in the region, but all the way to the western Balkans, for example. The style is not just similar, it's identical and uh, also in northern and east Africa. Despite the obvious fact that they all belong to a single culture, or at least cultures that were very well connected, um, officially they are accredited to people that uh, had nothing to do with each other, and in some cases were separated with over thousand and a half years. And the strangest of all is that the people believe all these fables. Well, they are fed to us in pieces. Nobody tells you the big picture. Nobody shows you uh, all these sites next to each other. The history is always given fragmented. Um, like each of them will be included only in the local history. And um, the situation is not uh, presented in its entirety. And because we are descendants of uh, those who survived the cleanup of the most learned and brave people, we are actually a descendants of those who abandoned the ways of their forefathers, the nature people, just to remain alive because the bravest ones, they paid with their lives just to be free. While chanting the praises of the mother goddess A refusal of betrayal Women were dying to be free So those who were more brave They were burned at the stake or killed during the various other holocausts of the nature people and we are actually descendants mostly of the cowardly portion of the population and basically we are born in a society of cowards and since childhood in school we are taught how to be an obedient cowardly robots. But when they killed the brave ones at the stake, they only destroyed their bodies, you cannot kill their soul. And when the souls of the brave nature people get reborn, even in such a parasitic society as ours, they retain some distant memory of their past ideas, because as we know, when children get born, they are not just a white sheet of paper that learns from the society. It doesn't depend all on their upbringing. Many cases show that even twins that were raised uh, together in the same conditions are completely different people. And that's because... The subtle, the gross body, when it is destroyed, it turns into earth, but the subtle body, which uh, contains parts of our belief system, travels together with the soul. In um, the Hindu context, they call it karmakshaya, the sum total of all our karma. And that contains countless seeds from our past and future lives. And when the winds of change come upon Mother Earth and there is chance again that the people will decide to return to being nature people, then the seeds of knowledge of the nature people will sprout again. And look at the 
people grew through the knowledge she gave them Herbs to heal their bodies, spells to make their spirits whole Can't you hear them chanting, healing incantations Calling forth the wise ones, celebrating and dance and song